In this video, I'd like to do three example problems of KSP problems, aka solubility and precipitation problems. So in this first one, 37.6 grams of lead chloride, PBCl2 solid, are added to water. If the final volume of the solution is 445 milliliters, what's the concentration of chloride or Cl- ions in the solution at equilibrium? So whenever you're doing a KSP problem or a solubility precipitation problem like this, the first thing I always like to do is make an ice table. So the ice table is of course going to be for our solubility reaction here. And the solubility reaction is going to be solid lead chloride in equilibrium with its dissociated ions, lead and chloride. And of course there are two chloride ions and they're both in the aqueous state because they're dissolved in water. And notice there's nothing written under our reactant here, PBCl2, because it is a pure solid. And whenever you make an ice table for an equilibrium reaction, you don't include pure solids and liquids in your calculations. So ICE again stands for initial change in equilibrium. So initially we had no dissolved ions, no dissociated ions. We're going to assume we started off with all solid, undissolved lead chloride. And so we have zero molar concentrations of each in the initial state. And then we've got our change row. So for your change row, you always want to use X terms and you want to make them positive for your dissociated ions. So this is a plus X and a plus two X because this has a one in front of the lead and a two in front of the chloride. That's why this is plus one X and plus two X. So to obtain our equilibrium row or our equilibrium concentrations, we simply add together the I and the C, the initial and the change. Zero plus X is X, zero plus two X is two X, and now we're ready to write our KSP or equilibrium expression. So we know KSP is gonna be equal to the concentration of our products over the concentration of our reactants as all equilibrium expressions are. However, we know to exclude this or really just write it in as an invisible one because it's a pure solid. So it's gonna be concentration of lead times the concentration of chloride squared because of this two here over an invisible one. So we know that we found from our ice table that the equilibrium concentration of lead in terms of X is gonna be just X and the equilibrium concentration of chloride in terms of X is gonna be two X. So really our KSP expression is gonna look like this after we did our rice table. And now KSP, we know on, from our table, KSP of lead chloride, you should have this available to you, is 1.7 times 10 to the negative five. So we can set X times two X squared equal to 1.7 times 10 to the negative five. And you can see X times two X squared is actually equal to four X cubed. I show that up here, cause two times X times two times X times X is really the same thing as 2x squared times x comes out to 2 times 2 is 4, x times x times x is x cubed. Then I simply isolated x here by dividing by 4 on both sides and taking the cubed root. And then I was able to find that x is equal to 0 0.0162 molar. And we actually have to multiply this concentration by 2 because again, we're looking at the chloride concentration at equilibrium. And we know this has a stoichiometric coefficient of 2. So this was just X, but remember chloride's equilibrium concentration is two times X. So we multiplied that by two, and we found that at equilibrium, the concentration of chloride ions in the solution are 0.0324 molar. Okay, this next problem says that the magnesium two plus concentration in the ocean is 1,250 milligrams per liter. At what hydroxide or OH minus concentration will magnesium hydroxide MgOH2 begin precipitating. So this is actually another KSP, AKA solubility or precipitation problem. And the first thing I like to do for these problems is write an ice table for this solubility reaction. So of course, we're gonna start out with our solid reactant here, magnesium hydroxide. And even though we're technically going from dissolved ions into our solid compound here, we're talking about precipitation, which is going from here to here, it makes the math work out more easily if you always write it this way, where you have your solid compound dissociating into its ion products in the aqueous state. So again, this is a pure solid. We will exclude it from our ice table. So for the initial row, when we find the initial amounts of our uh, ions here in molarity, in concentration, we're gonna assume we didn't start out with any hydroxide because we weren't told about it. 
and that we started out with a certain amount of magnesium, but we have to change it to molarity. And you can see I've already done that. So to change 1250 milligrams per liter to molarity, I did these calculations over here. So 1250 milligrams per liter means that we have 1.25 grams per liter. I just changed milligrams into grams, and that made the conversion from grams to moles a little bit easier. So I know that 1.25 grams over 24.3 grams, which is the molecular weight of magnesium ions, is gonna give me the moles of magnesium two plus ions. So then once I had moles of magnesium two plus ions, so this is moles per one liter, I found that there was 0.0514 molar concentration of magnesium two plus in the ocean. So I went ahead and put that as my initial concentration of magnesium two plus. And again, I'm assuming I started out with no hydroxide. And then for my change, well, they didn't tell me about any additional magnesium. This is just the, you know, the set concentration of magnesium in the ocean. So there really was no change here. So I'm just gonna put this down as its equilibrium concentration for the magnesium. However, with our hydroxide, we know uh, we're gonna add some X amount. We don't know how much to begin precipitating, but that's what we're trying to find. Uh, so really our answer here is gonna be the 2X because this is the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide just at the cusp, the threshold of when you begin precipitating magnesium hydroxide. So again, I plus C is E, so I added together the zero molar plus the two X, and again, this two is here because of the stoichiometric coefficient of two in front of the hydroxide. And we end up with this KSP expression here. So KSP is gonna be equal to our product concentrations, magnesium two plus concentration times hydroxide concentration squared because of that two. And we know the KSP of magnesium hydroxide from our table is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 12. So I went ahead and set this equal to the concentration of Mg2 plus at equilibrium times the concentration of hydroxide at equilibrium. And of course I have to square that, so it's 2x squared. And then from here, really all you have to do is some algebra to isolate x on your calculator. And once you do that, you'll find that x equals 7.38 times 10 to the negative six. So this was x, right? So I want 2x, so I had to multiply that by two since there are two hydroxide ions produced from this solubility reaction. And you find that this concentration, 1.48 times 10 to the negative five molar, is the concentration precisely of hydroxide where magnesium hydroxide will begin precipitating. This is the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide just before this starts precipitating. Okay, in this last problem, 0.647 grams of silver chromate, Ag2CrO4 solid, were dissolved in 946 milliliters of water. How many grams of silver chromate will remain undissolved? So again, this is a KSP problem, a solubility problem, and we're assuming it's going to reach equilibrium. So for this situation, it's useful to write out an ice table. So here's the solubility reaction here. We have solid silver chromate in equilibrium with its solubility products, two Ag plus in the aqueous state and CrO4 two minus in the aqueous state. And we know that this solubility reaction and the ice table is gonna give us the usual information. And that is the equilibrium concentrations of the solubility products. So in other words, this ice table is gonna tell us how much Ag2CrO4 dissolved. But look what they asked for. They asked how much Ag2CrO4 will not dissolve, will remain undissolved. So you need to think about this problem in terms of this equation here. The total silver chromate that we put in at the end is always gonna be equal to the undissolved silver chromate plus the dissolved silver chromate. So if this ice table is gonna give us the amount of dissolved silver chromate, and we already know the total amount of silver chromate, we can simply subtract the dissolved silver chromate from the total to figure out how much was left undissolved. So first things first, let's figure out this ice table to figure out how much is going to dissolve. So again, when we put a solid mass into a solution, we assume we start out with no solubility products. So the concentrations of these solubility products will start out at zero molar in the initial row. Then in the change row, we do plus X for our products and this will be a plus two X because of this two. This will be a plus one X because of the invisible one here. Zero plus two X is two X, zero plus X is X. 
Now we're ready to set up our KSP. So KSP again is going to be equal to the concentration of our solubility products and the silver is going to be squared because of this two here. And then we can go ahead and plug in the equilibrium concentrations in terms of X. So two X is going to go in for the silver and X is going to go in for the chromate ion and 2x squared times x is 4x cubed. So then you set your KSP, which is 9 times 10 to the negative 12, equal to 4x cubed. Isolate x, and you find that it is 0 0.000131 molar. So now we know this is the concentration of x at equilibrium. So this, for example, would be the concentration of chromate ions at equilibrium. And we know that since silver chromate and chromate are in a one-to-one -one molar ratio, this is going to be essentially the solubility of silver chromate. This is how much silver chromate is going to dissolve in terms of concentration and molarity. But we didn't have a full liter, right? Molarity is moles per liter. In other words, this means 0 0.000131 moles of silver chromate per one liter. We only had 946 milliliters which is 0.946 liters. So I went ahead and accounted for that here, and I found that we actually dissolved 0.000124 moles of silver chromate. And again, think about why I'm doing this. I'm trying to get to moles and then eventually to grams so that I can subtract from the total silver chromate in grams that I have to get grams of silver chromate undissolved. So now I have moles of silver chromate that were dissolved and I changed that to grams by multiplying by the molecular weight of silver chromate, which is 332 grams per mole. And I found that 0 0.0412 grams of silver chromate were dissolved at equilibrium. So I went ahead and plugged in 0 0.0412 grams for dissolved silver chromate. I plugged in 0 0.647 grams for the total silver chromate. And I'm solving for the undissolved silver chromate here. And you can see I went ahead and subtracted 0.0412 grams from both sides, and I was able to isolate undissolved silver chromate equals 0.6058 grams. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next one.